The popularity of vinyl records has surged in the last decade or so. But how do these things actually work? How do we get music from grooves on a piece of plastic? Let's find out. The first handle-cranked phonographs came along in the late 1800s, but right now we're looking at the more modern, electrically powered and amplified record players. We shall start with the turntable, which is a rotating platform covered in soft plastic or rubber designed not to scratch the records that sit on top of it. The spindle in the middle of the platform centres the record, and the rotation of the platform spins the record at a constant speed. The stylus, sometimes called a needle, traces the grooves on the record surface. The cone-shaped tip is made from diamond, or some other hard material, and is suspended by a flexible metallic strip. It rides through the grooves on the surface of the record, transmitting the vibrations generated by it running over modulations in the groove. The vibrations picked up by the stylus are transmitted to the cartridge, where it converts them into electrical signals. It achieves this by allowing the stylus to move a strong magnet, close to a coil of wire, and the movement of the magnet induces an electrical current. The stylus and the cartridge are connected to the tone arm, which slowly moves inwards, tracking the spiral groove of the record. The electrical signals travel in wires in the tone arm to an amplifier, where they are strengthened before finally being fed into a speaker, which transform these electrical signals into sound. So that's how the player plays the records, but of course that's only half the story. Making records is an interesting process as well. We start in a recording studio, where a song will have been recorded onto magnetic tape. The song is then fed into a variable pitch cutting lathe, essentially a record cutting machine. A blank master record, made of an aluminium disc coated in a soft black lacquer, is inserted into the machine. The machine operates a little like a reverse record player, with a sharp heated stylus cutter engraving the appropriate modulations into a spiral groove pattern. The finished master is coated in a thin layer of silver, turning it into a metal master. This metal master is transported to a plating plant, where a metal mould is cast around it and then electroplated with chromium to ensure resilience. These stampers are used to press the records. A square of vinyl is heated so that it becomes soft and fed into a hydraulic press with both stampers waiting. The press is activated and the two stampers press the grooves into the record. It is then cut into the required circular shape, the label is applied, and a spindle hole is cut through the centre. There are a few different sizes of record, and each requires the turntable to rotate at a different speed. An LP, 12 inches in diameter, has around 20 minutes of music on each side, and has to be played at 33 and a third revolutions per minute. The smaller singles, 7 inches in diameter, contain around 5 minutes of music, and need to be played at 45 revolutions per minute. You might have noticed that when describing the capacity of the records, I've been rather vague, and that's because there isn't actually defined capacity. This is because a song that is louder, or has more bass, takes up more space. The grooves have to be wider to elicit a stronger response from the needle, meaning you can fit fewer grooves on the record, resulting in less available capacity per side. Initially, records were only available in mono, meaning one single audio channel. This meant that even if you had two speakers playing audio, it would be the exact same audio played through each. When stereophonic sound came along in 1958, you could then have two tracks of audio, allowing for both a more natural sounding recording, as well as the ability to play with the perception of sound positioning. But how do you get two tracks of audio in one groove of a record? Here we have a mono record paired with a mono player. The stylus passes over modulations in the groove, moving up and down, passing this movement to the cartridge. In a stereo system, we still have one stylus, but it's connected to two cartridges, each at a 45 degree angle. Each audio track is pressed into one side of the wall of the groove, so a rise in the left hand side of the groove will affect the right hand side cartridge, and the right side of the groove, the left cartridge. A rather ingenious solution. It's easy to see why vinyls have made a comeback. In a world of digital downloads, streaming on demand and heavily produced music, the imperfect sound of a record has an appealing charm. For many music listeners, the satisfaction of owning a tangible object produced by a favourite artist is an important part of the experience. 
and is not easily replicated by downloading an MP3. If you liked the video, perhaps consider subscribing.